Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Evelyn. So for today's video, I wanted to put all the DIYs that I did in the year 2023 and put them all in one video for you guys. I did see Drew from Lone Fox do this last year and I really enjoyed it so I thought I should recreate it for you guys. That way they're all in one video and it's easier for you guys to refer back to in case you forget which video I did what DIY in. Also, if you are new to my channel, then you will be seeing some new content and hopefully you guys get lots of ideas on what DIYs you can recreate. This video might be a little long since I did do quite a few DIYs so without further ado, let's get started. For the first DIY, I really wanted to recreate that vintage look on a frame. So I'm going in with this decorative wax by Bear. I picked it up at Home Depot and I started off by using a paper towel and just wiping it on. But I noticed that it was just smearing the product. So I went in with a paintbrush and started stippling it and it worked perfectly. I just did it all around the frame and it looks identical to one that I purchased from Target. So I definitely got that vintage look. So for the next DIY, I purchased some Etsy digital downloads and had them printed at CVS and I went in with Mod Podge to make these prints look a little bit more real. So all you're going to need is some Mod Podge and a paintbrush and you're just going to follow the brush strokes of the print and it's going to make it look like real art so it's going to add some texture and it's also going to mattify it. So here's how both the frame and the prints turned out. Next up is this Easy Off trick that is super easy. All you need is a can of Easy Off. I purchased it from Walmart and I did this on a stool that I found on Facebook Marketplace for I believe $15. So I sprayed it on and I left it sitting in the sun for about 20 minutes. That way it starts getting all that stain off. And then I just went in with a brush and started scrubbing it off. I believe I did two coats on the stool. Once you're done scrubbing, you're going to rinse it with your hose and it's not going to look like it did anything in it's still going to look very orange but just let it sit out in the sun for quite some time and then it's going to look completely different as you can see it completely transformed this stool and this stool is also a great dupe to ones that I've seen on vintage shops that are over $300 so definitely check your Facebook marketplace for these type of stools they are such a great steal there I also did it on a side table that I found on Facebook Marketplace. I did have to cut off some part of the leg so that it was the same height as my couch. But again, I just sprayed on the Easy Off. I let it sit for about 20 minutes and started scrubbing away. And I do remember that I had to do it quite a few times because it had a lot of stain. So just do as many coats as you need and then just rinse it off with your hose. Again, let it sit out in the sun and it's going to completely transform that piece of furniture. So two of my favorite lamps that I have in my house were DIYs and I did do them this year. So the very first one is from this Facebook marketplace find. I purchased it for I believe 
$35. I don't really remember, but it was a great find. And I'm sure you guys all recognize this lamp. It was pink before, so what you're going to need is some decorative glaze by Rust-Oleum, or you can also just use dirt and water. And you're also going to need two paint samples. One is Eiffel for You by Bear and Ash and Tan by Benjamin Moore. I also decided to add some baking soda to the first paint colors. So the first color I'm going in with is Ash and Tan by Benjamin Moore. I love using paint samples for my DIYs because they have excellent coverage. As you can see, it right away started covering up that pink color and leaving it like this just by itself would look beautiful. I also went in with the paintbrush and started stippling it just to give it some texture. And then I did go in with that second color. This one is Eiffel for You by Bear. I also added some baking soda and this one I did a very light hand. So I really wanted that first color to peek through just to make it look very distressed and like it's been wearing off. So you're going to just do a very light hand of that second color. You can also just stipple it on so that the first color peeks through. You're then going to go in with that Rust-Oleum decorative glaze or like I mentioned you can just mix some dirt and water to get kind of the same look. So what I did was just dip my paintbrush into the glaze and started rubbing it all over the lamp and then I would go in with a paper towel to kind of dab it or wipe it just so that it wouldn't have too much glaze but to still give it that distressed and aged look. This Facebook Marketplace find was such a great deal. Like I mentioned, I believe I got it for $35 and I remember that the listing said it was from the 1980s. So once I was completely done with the DIY, I saw this other lamp on TJ Maxx for $150 and I couldn't believe the price and how similar it looked to my DIY. So don't sleep on Facebook Marketplace. You can find some amazing deals and lamps and don't just look at the color, look at the shape and what you can do to change up the look with some paint. So for this next lamp DIY, I was very inspired by this beautiful lamp that I've seen on the McKean Co website. I've also seen it at Amber Interiors and a few other websites. So I went in with a few different colors. The first color that I'm going to go in with is Ash and Tan by Benjamin Moore. It is the same paint sample that we used for the first lamp DIY and I did add some baking soda just because the base of this lamp was very shiny and I wanted it to look very textured and ceramic. So I went in with one coat of that ashen tan color and then I did go in with a few different colors that I picked up at both Walmart and Hobby Lobby. So the colors that I picked up are Territorial Beige and Melted Chocolate from Walmart and I also picked up Coffee Latte, Linen, and Mushroom from Hobby Lobby but I ended up not using Mushroom. So the first step that I'm going to be doing is mixing Territorial Beige and Coffee Latte and you're just going to blend those together with a paper towel. And then on top of it, you're going to be adding melted chocolate. I did use a paper towel because it blends the colors very seamlessly and it gives it that vintage look. So you don't want to really go in with a paintbrush because you will have brush strokes. Here and there, I would add the linen color, which is a lighter shade, just to add a little bit more dimension and lighter spots to the lamp. But overall, I did use territorial beige and coffee latte. And then I would layer on that melted chocolate on top. I did find this lamp at home goods for a great price and i thought it was the perfect shape my original plan was to use this vase that i picked up from h&m home it's also a great shape if you do want to recreate it with this vase it is a lot smaller but perfect shape you can just add a candlestick holder with a rechargeable light bulb and your lampshade and it would give you that same beautiful look so to make this lamp look very similar to the designer one i did go in with a toothpick and start rubbing off some parts 
lights so that the white base would peek through. I noticed that the designer lamp has these little white specks so I wanted to recreate that and I also painted the silver part black. I added a lampshade from Walmart and that completed this DIY. Moving on to the next DIY, it was inspired by these bells that are on the Amber Interiors website for $150 and I knew I could recreate them when I saw these hooks at Target for $5. These were from the Target dollar section back in spring, so I'm hoping they bring them back this next year so that you guys could recreate them. I'm also using some bells that I've had from Amazon, but you can use whatever bells you already have. And last but not least, I'm also using this decorative wax by Bear that I picked up from Home Depot. So the very first step is aging the bells that you have. I noticed that the amber interiors bells are very dark and rustic so I wanted to recreate that with this wax so I'm stippling it on with this paintbrush and adding some more texture and dimension to these bells from Amazon. As you can see it completely transformed them and made them a lot darker and a lot more rustic so that is the look we are trying to go for and that is it. It's a very simple DIY. I just placed them on top of the hooks and since the hooks are the same height I did style them very differently so I added one on top of some books and then the other hook just right next to it just to add some height and make them look like the amber interiors belts. So in this next DIY, I recreated this stone plate from Lulu and Georgia. I've also seen them at vintage shops, so I knew I could recreate them when I saw these bowls at Dollar Tree for $1. So I also picked up some mortar mix at Home Depot. So all you're going to need is a bucket, these two bowls from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need this red cup for measuring purposes, some WD-40, the mortar mix, and then something to mix it with. So the very first thing I did was follow the instructions of the mortar mix that I I picked up mine said to mix four parts mix and one part water I ended up using a little bit more water because I wanted it to be a little bit more runny so I mixed that together and the reason that I'm using this red cup is for you guys so that you guys could recreate it and know how much mix I ended up using for one bowl so after I mixed that all together I added some WD-40 on top of one of the bowls and then on the bottom of the other bowl so that it wouldn't stick and it could slide off easily So once I did that, I filled up one full red cup of mix and poured it onto the bowl that had the WD-40 on top. And then I squished together the other bowl that had WD-40 on the bottom and they created this plate look. You can adjust the height of the plate and how thick it is. And then once you like the shape of it, you can add something heavy on top so that it stays that shape. I let it sit in the bowl for about one hour and then I removed it and let it sit in the sun for a little longer so that it would completely dry. Once it's completely dry, it's going to look very white. So then you're going to go in with that decorative wax by Bear. You're going to start stippling it on with a paper towel. This is just going to add more texture and make it look very distressed and old, kind of like the one from Lulu and Georgia and the ones from vintage shops. And don't forget to get the bottom part as well, since that is kind of what you see when you style it. So the next day I sanded down the edges because I wanted it to look very round I didn't want it to have very rough edges so I just used some sandpaper and sanded the edges and then I touched it up with some more decorative wax and then I styled it with a candle.
So I'm sure we've all seen these vintage Turkish olive jars that are pretty expensive and I thought I could recreate them when I saw these two vases at Hobby Lobby. There was two different sizes but I decided to go with the smaller one that I got for $12.50. And you're also going to need some paint colors. I got English Ivy, Golden Sunset, Melted Chocolate, Khaki, and Beige and I picked these all up from Walmart and you're also going to need some baking soda. So the first color that I went with is beige it had that perfect peachy undertone that these jars tend to have so i did one coat of that and then i poured the color khaki and this other color but i ended up not using it so then i used a paper towel to dab the color khaki all over the vase and then to blend it i added more of the beige color so that it blended seamlessly i did do this throughout the entire vase so that it added this beautiful layer kind of like it's been sitting out for a long time and it's worn out and then i did want to add some more dimension and color so what I did is water down the color melted chocolate and this is what gave it that beautiful texture and dimension I was so happy with this so I used a paper towel to just dab it all over the vase and as you can see it made the vase look like it's been sitting out for a long time and it's collected a lot of dirt and dust so this is definitely what made it look very vintage and very similar to those Turkish olive jars. I also noticed that these jars have drip marks going down the vase so I wanted to recreate that. I watered down some of that beige color and I started creating drip marks with the back of my paintbrush and at first they were a little too light so I added a little bit more of that beige color and then I used a paper towel to blend them a little bit. And last but not least, for the top portion, I mixed quite a few colors, but I ended up just going in with English Ivy, and I wanted it to look very imperfect, so I made sure to not do any straight lines. You want it to look very organic, so you kind of want to do jagged edges, and I did add a little bit of the mixture to add dimension, but you can totally skip this step. I didn't really notice a difference, so you can totally just skip that part. And then I did add some paint on the bottom portion, just to make it look like like it's been chipping and wearing out and then last but not least to give it that glossy look I went in with this Sculpey glaze that I got from Michaels and that completes the Turkish olive jar. Another vase that I DIY'd is this beautiful vase that I purchased from Home Goods. I loved the shape, but I didn't like the colors, so I wanted to switch it up. All you're going to need is some paint colors, some baking soda, and some paint brushes. The very first step that I did was paint the entire vase ash and tan, and I did add some baking soda because the vase had a very glossy and shiny finish, so I wanted to mattify it and give it that ceramic texture. Now I 
wanted to be completely transparent with you guys not all DIYs turn out the very first time for example this base I had to paint it twice in order for me to like it so the very first time what I did was go in with burnt umber and territorial beige and I wasn't feeling the color it was very warm and it had a red undertone so I decided to scratch that I then went in with melted chocolate and I mixed it with a black color and it gave me that perfect neutral cool toned brown that I was going for so I started dabbing that all over the vase and then I would go in with territorial beige to kind of create these mud patches that these vintage bases have so all you need for this DIY is the ash and tan color or any color that is just going to mattify it and then you're going to need melted chocolate black and territorial beige so as you can see i just went in with that cool toned brown and then i would dab in territorial beige here and there to add some dimension and some texture And for the handles and the rim, I did use a paintbrush and lightly blended the two colors together. And this is how it turned out. It is one of my absolute favorite vases. It's just so beautiful and I feel like it looks very vintage. Next up, we are going to be recreating the scallop dish from Amber Interiors. It is $180, but we are going to recreate it for a lot less. I went to Michael's and I picked up some clay and also this toolkit that is going to help us shape the tray. So all you're going to need is some clay. I picked up the color Burnt Umber and you're also going to need the toolkit. This is the most affordable one that I could find. You're also going to need some glaze, a quarter, and a ruler to measure out the tray. So to start off you're going to mold the clay and I will say that this clay is very hard and tough so you're going to need a lot of strength to mold it into the shape that you want. What I did is I would cut off bits and pieces to kind of make it that very elongated oval shape so just work with what you have. I believe I did use two packs for this tray. You can also make it as thick as you want. I did mine a little thinner but if I could do it again I would probably do it a little bit thicker. I've said it many times I know I would change my ways, I know for sure When all the crows decide to meet They settle down beneath my feet so once I liked the shape, I made sure to measure it so that it was the same dimensions as the one from Amber Interiors. And then I went in with a quarter to create the scallops. I did want my scallops to be very large, so that's why I went in with a quarter. But you can also use a nickel, a penny, depending on the size of the scallops that you want. So then I used this tool to cut them out. So once you cut that out, you're going to lift the edges and smooth out the scallops. That way it looks a little bit more handmade. I I did follow the instructions on how much I needed to bake it for so I put it in the oven and baked it for the amount of time that the packaging said so depending on the clay that you picked up just follow the instructions so for this clay that I picked up at Michaels I had to bake it for 30 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit and I did let it cool down for quite some time because when you take it out of the oven it still feels very soft so make sure it cools down so that it gets hard I then watered down some 
some black paint because I wanted to add those black spots and dimension that the one from Amber Interiors had so I dabbed it on with a paper towel I let it dry for a little bit and then I wiped it off and it created this beautiful dimension and then the last step to this DIY is adding that Sculpey glaze to create that beautiful shine that the original one has don't forget to also do the bottom part so that it all looks very cohesive and then I styled it with my candle snuffer that I got from the Target dollar section or you can also add some matches some jewelry you can style it so many different ways this is definitely one of my favorites it was super easy to recreate This next DIY was one of your guys' favorites and it was a vintage breadboard. So I was very inspired by the ones that I've seen at Olive Atelier. So I picked up a cutting board from Hobby Lobby. You're also going to need brown and black paint and a flathead screwdriver. So the very first thing I did was sand down the cutting board. You can just go in with sandpaper or whatever you already have. And then I went in with the flathead screwdriver and started distressing it. I noticed that these breadboards have a lot of cracks in them. So I really wanted to recreate that so you're going to notice that I created some deeper cracks on the cutting board and then some I did very lightly So once I liked the distressing on the cutting board, I then went in with brown paint. I watered it down and then I used a paper towel to dab it all around the edges. I wanted it to look very aged and worn out so I did that all around the edges. I also then watered down some black paint and then I added that on top of the brown paint. And one step that I completely forgot to show is wiping those two colors together. You can also just wet a paper towel with no paint and mix those two colors together all over the board so that it blends it seamlessly and that's it it's super easy very affordable i think this was under ten dollars and i still use it to this day it is one of my absolute favorite diys This has to be my absolute favorite DIY that I did this year and it is this beautiful shady lady tree. I always get asked where the tree behind my intros is from and it is a tree that I actually made. So what you're going to need is a tree branch, a bucket, some mortar mix, and these stems that I picked up from Amazon. I believe this DIY cost me less than $50 so it is an amazing DIY that you can recreate for such an affordable price and it was very easy so the first thing that I did was add the mortar mix into this bucket that I got from Lowe's I followed the instructions but I did add more water this time because I wanted it to look like a creamy milkshake I then stuck the tree branch in and then I kind of leaned it against my house so that it wouldn't move and it would stay very straight I let it dry for a few hours and then I started adding the branches so I'm using these stems that I got from Amazon I believe it's a 12 pack 
pack for $40. I have them linked down below for you guys. I cut the stems into smaller pieces and I exposed the wire and then I would drill a hole into the tree branch and then just stick the stem into it. And I did follow a very specific shape because I wanted to recreate the shady ladies that I've seen in the Studio Miggy website and Amber Interiors. So I started off by adding a few little branches at the very bottom. Then I did a short layer, a longer layer, a short layer, another longer layer and then at the very top I kind of wanted them to be sticking out. Once I liked the placement of the stems I then went in with Gorilla Glue and secured each stem into the tree that way it wouldn't move or fall off. It was a little time consuming but it is going to be very worth it at the end. It looks very high end and designer. These trees tend to go for over a thousand dollars and to be able to get the look for around fifty dollars is such a great deal so once I was completely completely done. I put it into this vintage pot that I got from Etsy and then I added some moss that I got from Michaels and here's the final look to it. Another DIY that I did this year was reupholster this ottoman that I got from Facebook Marketplace. I first started off by ripping out the fabric that it came with. It was very dirty and I didn't want to keep it so I ripped it out and then I purchased this beautiful corduroy almost velvet type fabric from Joann's and I got such a great deal on it. So I'll have it linked down below in case you're interested. The very first thing that I did was start off with the middle parts on each side. So I made sure to pull the fabric very tightly and then I used an electric staple gun which by the way is going to be a lifesaver for the DIY. It's going to be a lot harder if you use a hand one. Your hand is going to get really tired but you're just going to secure that fabric to the middle and then you're going to slowly start stapling towards the corners. Make sure that the fabric is very tight. That way when you flip it over the fabric is not loose. Once you did to the corners I just it a very clean fold. You definitely just want to watch the video to see how I folded it because it's very hard for me to explain. But once you staple down the corners, you're then going to cut off all the excess fabric and then I added these beautiful vintage turn legs that I got from Amazon and they do come with the caster wheels which just added this beautiful vintage touch and I love how this turned out. Alright you guys, that concludes today's video. I know it's not new content, but hopefully you guys enjoyed looking back at all the DIYs that I did this year. Let me know down below in the comments which DIY was your favorite. I think mine was definitely this tree. It's one of my absolute favorites and it was so easy and affordable as well. I will have links to everything that you need for the DIYs down below in case you do want to recreate them. And if you do recreate them, tag me on Instagram or let me know down below in the comments. I would love to know. Anyways, I hope you all had an amazing Christmas and I wish you all a happy new year. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye!